Hi folks, welcome back. I hope you're all doing well. So today I want to take a look at a paper which came out back in 1998. And it's really interesting because it looks at how one would implement the Java virtual machine instruction set in hardware. I believe Sun designed and then implemented a few prototypes, but this never really made it out in a major product. But this is still a very interesting design study in how one would take a virtual instruction set and one that is stack based, not register based, and then implement it in hardware. So why would you want to do this? The ultimate motivation is to get good performance even in small footprint devices. Since Java is a virtual instruction set, it requires a runtime, i.e. the JVM, to execute it. And if you have a simple interpreter as your JVM, it's gonna have a small footprint, but execution is going to be slow. On the other hand, if you have a complex just-in-time optimizing compiler, it's gonna execute your bytecode fast, but the JVM and compiler itself are going to be large and complex. And the goal of this effort, which they called Pico Java, is to implement the JVM instruction set directly in hardware so that you can get decent performance, but in small footprint devices. It's interesting to note that while this motivation may have held at the time, the world rapidly changed around it in that Today, such an effort would probably not be worth it because one, optimizing compilers are really fast, they're really good, they're not as heavyweight as they used to be, and two, running those optimized compilers on regular general purpose CPUs gives you really good performance anyway. I've covered the JVM instruction set in an older video on this channel, and I'll link to that below. But at a very high level, it is a stack-based instruction set, which means that the instructions refer implicitly to operands that are on the top of the stack. For example, if you have an add instruction, the instruction is just that, it's just add, and it pops the top two elements of the stack, adds them, and then pushes the result back onto the stack. And to give you a fully fleshed out model for computation, of course, you need a lot more instructions, and these are the broad classes of instructions that the Java virtual instruction set is made up of. One of the desirable properties of having a stack-based instruction set compared to a register-based one is that it is much smaller and that savings in size mostly comes from all the operands being implicit as being taken from the top of the stack. Whereas in register-based instruction sets, you have to explicitly spell out either the register or the memory address from where you are getting the operands for each instruction. One very notable property of the JVM bytecodes is that they are memory safe. You can only refer to memory through opaque references. You cannot directly read or write a raw address. However, if you are designing a processor, even if it's only to execute bytecode, you will still need basic underlying functionality to load and store arbitrary memory locations, if only for low-level operations beneath the JVM. But you're also going to need them to execute native code that Java bytecode calls out to. So in addition to supporting the Java virtual instruction set, the Pico Java hardware architecture has to augment its instruction set to support these additional instructions for raw memory access. With all of that taken into account, the final instruction set adds up to about 300 instructions. So the authors took an approach of dividing them into categories when implementing them in hardware. The first category is simple instructions, which are very risk-like, can be directly implemented in hardware, and the vast majority of JVM instructions fall into this category. Things like integer and floating point, arithmetic, and Boolean operations, and so on and they execute in a single clock cycle. The next group are moderately complicated instructions, which occur less frequently than the simple instructions, but are still prevalent in, in programs. And these are implemented as microcode. 
depending on the complexity of the instructions, these microcoded instructions can go from executing in just three cycles to all the way up to 21 cycles. And then finally, you have instructions that really imply a lot of heavyweight functionality. A good example of that is the new instruction, which actually allocates a new Java object. This involves a lot of work. You have to go look up the class definition for the thing that you're allocating. You might have to go load new class files. And finally, you have to coordinate with the memory management of the underlying operating system. So this one instruction really implies a lot of work. So instructions like these that are really complex are not implemented in hardware, but they trap out to software. All right, now we come to one of the central design challenges in implementing this instruction set in hardware, which is that the instruction set is stack based, but the underlying hardware implementation is still a register based von Neumann machine. So we need something that takes a stack based instruction set and adapts it to executing on a register based hardware architecture. And what the authors came up with was to use a register file. But the novel idea here is to use a circular register file of 64 registers. So this is essentially a circular stack that wraps around on itself. So you can push and pop elements onto the circular stack as you would with any normal stack. And then when you fill up all 64 slots, you spill out values from registers onto your main memory. Similarly, when the stack has room available in it, you can read back values that were previously spilled out to main memory and bring them back into your register file. This architecture gives you the opportunity for a very interesting optimization that they call instruction folding. And what this basically means is that if you see a sequence of instructions which are accessing any of these top 64 elements on the stack, you can combine them into one single risk-like instruction. Here's an example of instruction folding that happens pretty frequently. You have two iLoad instructions which in the JVM instruction set take a local variable, an integer local variable, and push their values onto the stack. Then you have an I add instruction, which takes the top two values of the stack and pushes the result back. And then finally, you have an I store instruction, which takes the result of the addition and stores it in a third local variable. So this is basically the instruction sequence that is the result of compiling something like A equals B plus C. In this architecture with a circular register stack, you can notice that this set of instructions is only manipulating the top few elements of the stack and rewrite it to a straightforward risk-like add instruction. So instead of executing four stack-based instructions, you can execute directly one simple risk instruction. This happens very frequently in bytecode and is a very significant optimization. As the authors mentioned here, about 28% of all instructions can get folded into simpler ones. The next big design challenge is memory management. The JVM is garbage collected because it gives you an opaque managed view of memory. And so the design question becomes how does the Pico Java hardware architecture work with a high level garbage collector? I don't want to get into the details of various garbage collection algorithms, but in the Pico Java architecture, they facilitate efficient garbage collection by implementing support for write barriers at the hardware level. A write barrier is a mechanism that makes it easier to perform generational garbage collecting. It basically allows the hardware to trap when you write to pointers outside of a given segment of memory. And this lets a generational garbage collector segment memory into various generations and then perform garbage collection locally within each generation. 
So that was a quick look at the design of the Pico Java hardware architecture, which directly implements the JVM instruction set in hardware. And we saw how they adapt a stack-based instruction set down to a register-based hardware implementation while also having good hardware support for other JVM functionality like garbage collection. I hope you enjoyed that and I will see you next time. Thank you very much.